to use tactful processes like that. Did you come up with that? Yeah, I did. <laughs> like, go, <laughs> yeah. That's God. This, this is number two point why you showed up today because that's legit. Never heard that before, and I've been doing this for a while. Brady Polson, Family First Live America, beyond excited to have Miss Bree Harrison joining us today. She is a 40 family a month producer. I think that's a platinum producer. Platinum, no, maybe diamond. Diamond. Diamonds, diamonds diamond. are more expensive like than platinum. Diamond, diamond. <laughs> diamond. Bowen, she likes diamonds. Uh, <laughs> diamond producer and um, also has an agency protecting nearly 500 families a month, which would make her an executive vice president, Family First Life. And all around just tremendous person. I'm um, excited to have Brie Harrison on. She's going to kind of share some of her backstory, how she produces at such high level. And then we're going to talk a little about recruiting as well. So how are you doing today, Brie? I'm good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Excellent. Excited to have you on here. And um, it's been some time. You've kind of been just working away. And the, you're just like, I just put my head down and work, Grady. I don't need all this fanfare and fodder. I don't know if I always wondered what fodder was, but it's fan. That's the line. It's fanfare and fodder. But <laughs> I think that's a grandpa line. But um, I haven't heard it before. But. No. Okay. Well, the, what, now you heard it. You're like oh, the first time I heard that was from Grady. Fanfare and fodder. Um, but tell us. Give us some backstory. Give us some insight. Tell us about you, and because yeah. um, there's a lot of people out there that are on the cusp of taking that leap. Maybe they're new, getting ready to get started, or they've gotten started, but they, you know, gotten started means they bought one batch of $300 of the leads, and now they just watch the training videos at work. And I got that. I, I watched for a while, but what, what's your what's your story, Brie? Um, so first of all, thank you for having me today, Grady. So my name is Brie Harrison. For those who don't know me, I've been with FFL for a little bit over a year now. Prior to this, I was going to school, working a part-time job. Um, I started at a practice company for like three weeks, so I wouldn't really consider it anything. And then um, we got introduced to Family First Life, and I remember we hopped on a call with Nina and Hayden. And at the end of that hour call, I was like, I'm in, I'm doing this, I'm ready to go. So I dropped out of school, I quit my job, and then I got my insurance license. So um, I didn't study very hard, so it took me a couple of tries to pass. So once I... Three. Three? three. I was so. four, so you beat oh, me. There yeah. You go. So. <laughs> um, so once I got started, um, I'm a very competitive person. So getting into this business, I saw Caitlin and Bowen instantly crush it off the bat. So I assumed... That's going to be me. I'm going to go out here. I'm going to produce, you know, 20, 30 families my first month. That did not happen. So um, it was a little bit hard for me. Um, I had never done anything in the insurance industry, nothing with sales. So this was like a whole new ball game for me. Um, so getting started, I wasn't scared to buy leads. I knew that that was part of being a business owner and, and getting into this business. The same month I got started, I'm like, perfect. There's a thousand dollars for leads. Um, however, I wasn't good with my time when I first started, got started. I was, um, I think my first month I did eight families protected. Okay. Um, I was buying leads, but I wasn't very, uh, I wasn't like dying my leads as much as I should have. So like I was showing up every single day. I was like, I'm working, I'm on Zoom every single day, but my activity wasn't very high. You okay. know, I would dial the phones. I was so dang nervous. My voice was shaking. I would go in the room, shut the door. I'm like, nobody listened to me, you know? Um, but I would make that call, wait, you know, a minute, five minutes, then make my next call. Okay. And so I feel like that's obviously what slowed me down in the beginning. However, I was a student of the game. I watched every single YouTube video, every single podcast. I wanted to absorb as much information as possible because I was like, I want to be good at this. Yeah. Um, I did, you know, ride alongs with Bowen in the field. And then I was like, okay, I'm ready to go. Um, if some of you out there are like me, I wanted to know everything about everything. I'm like, give me all the objections. Give me all the carriers. I want to know every little thing. And that's just not feasible. Like to get started, the best way is just to throw yourself into the process and learn as you go. So now when I have new agents are like, oh, you know, I'm not ready to get started. I'm like your first day we're buying leads. We're dialing the phones. That's the best way in my opinion to learn. Um, but like I said, my first month, eight families protected. And then I slowly did like 10, 12. I just never was hitting that 20 mark. And I was um, kind of figuring out leads, figuring out, you know, um, the, my schedule and structure and everything like that. And I remember I wasn't scared to buy leads, but I think I was 
kind of doing it different. So I was doing a lot of um, happy agent leads. So okay. those were like $25 a lead. So I was spending $1,000, but only working like 30, 40 leads. Got it. Instead of now, I run strictly instant internet leads from the CRM and I'm buying 100 to 150. So that gives me so, so many, many more, more opportunities for success. That's good. No, keep going. I didn't mean to talk. I, you're on a roll. Oh, no. like, <laughs> you're on a Get roll. Get me going. So what happened? And, um, what how did changed, it Yeah, so yeah what, what changed was um, one lead. So I switched up kind of what I was doing with my leads. And then um, with my activity and structure and schedule. So, you know, instead of being on Zoom and making, you know, three, four, five hundred dials a day, like I'm making a thousand dials a day every single day. So my first seven months, I did everything um, in home. I took advantage of travel trips. So we went to Florida, California. Utah all over the place and I love doing that um but then when virtual became a thing I was like this is for me I'm a homebody so I'm like now I can work from home like I'm in so um the last eight months I've been doing everything virtually and that's personally what I prefer now works either way just kind of personal preference um but I just love being able to work from anywhere at any time work all the different time zones and just be able to work from home that's awesome do you um do you buy leads weekly daily uh, do you buy uh, how, like what's your lead do you always have the crm open do you just buy batch and close it out and go i'm going to commit to this group like what's your lead purchase thing? um no so usually every day every other day um no matter what i'm buying leads mondays and thursdays and then just seeing how the week goes you know if i want to pick up some more leads in the crm that day i do i like to buy them when the work spot discount codes out because why not save money when why i'm not? buying leads so um I, mainly that i've tried game time happy agents um live transfers i've done it all but i just always keep going back to the crm so you live in Arizona. Where do you buy them? Um, so I like to work either Hawaii, Washington, to, I mean, all over the place, Texas, um, kind of wherever, different time zones. Did you, find it, did you find it hard in the beginning to work different areas or just kind of got your license and it wasn't? No. So when I, I already had, um, from doing all the travel trips, I had about 20 licenses. So that's the key to like working virtual is having a lot of licenses, I feel like. Um, because then you can just buy leads from anywhere. And like I said, work different time zones. So when we were in Hawaii, um, we were able to work in Texas time zone. So we're work, waking up at 4 or 5 a.m. and we're able to dial the phones that early. Um, so yeah, this has been awesome. NIPR.com, is that? NIPR.com, NIPR that's where you go and you get traditional non-resident license. So you all have your resident license in the state you live in. It's resident, where I live, I'm a resident. And your non-resident license, you don't take the test again. You don't have to do anything. It's pay a small fee and they give you another license and you can now have the ability to sell insurance. Some, some states come in in two, three hours. California takes like three months, but you know, it's just the way it is. And if you go get a bunch and you want to sell in different markets, that's how you do it. So that's awesome. So give me, um, like, so you buy, buy a hundred, 150 leads. Mm -hmm. What's your, is it, what is there software you use? What do you, what is your process? Like from how do you set up your day to make sure that you're going to go out there and like, is there a dial pattern? Like what, give us a, like a setup structure. If I wanted to take notes on seven things Bree does to get ready to hit go. Absolutely. So, um, phone burner, you need a phone burner. Okay. Um, I tried my first couple months without it. I was like, you don't need phone, phone burner. I can hand out. Why would I pay a hundred dollars when I can just, I hand know. Out? no. So instead <laughs> of calling a hundred people, let's call a thousand people in a day. So definitely, um, a phone burner. I have my day starting at 8am. So I'm on zoom, having everything prepped around 7:45. have my leads ready to go that way. I'm making my first dial at eight o'clock. And then with one call closes, you're dialing the phones all day long. So um, even after, you know, you might be dialing for your first, you know, five calls and get on a presentation and sell one, well, you're still going to continue to dial the rest of the day. So with like doing things virtual, um, sometimes you're dialing the phones for one, for a whole entire day and you might only talk to like, I don't know, 10 people that day. Okay. That's just part of um, doing things virtual, but I wouldn't have it any other way. So I'm dialing the phones from eight to noon. Okay. Take a small lunch break and then I'm back on the phone. So depending on um, what leads I have, I'll be work going back and forth between usually two batches of leads. Um, just because when you're buying so many leads, I mean, you never exhaust all those leads. Correct. So if I buy leads um, Monday, now it's Thursday and I bought a fresh batch of leads. Once I finish that Thursday batch, I'm going back to those ones I bought Monday and dialing through those again because they're still going to be oh, yeah. people who need help. So do you, uh, in phone burner, do you label on Monday date and like... Is yeah, it, I'll just whatever state I'm dialing in and then the date and then the type of lead. So usually just, just and so when you use phone burner and you get on a present just for the like a five second, uh, 15 second phone burner commercial, like how do you how do you use it? Upload it, 
click go and just let it ring. I mean, it's it's because I mean, don't, like there's we've had there's probably been thousands of people that have have used it, and so there's still a large. I mean, we keep adding agents every single week, so a lot of people don't understand the value of it. And you just like you said, you're like it's a hundred bucks a month. I don't want to spend this. I'll just dial it as much as you're making, even though you go hundred bucks a month to save time. You fight yeah. yourself, and then you <laughs> the, the, and then you go. This isn't an, an expense. It's an investment. Absolutely. So how do you, so how do you use it? I mean, do you put you uh, do you do folders of twenty or forty? I've heard different people the way they set it up. You put all hundred in. Yeah. So if, whatever batch of leads I buy, I put all of those in there, and then I'm dialing through all of those one full time through, and then I'll go back to them. Do you leave voicemails or send texts or anything? Um, I usually don't, just because I'm going to continue to call those leads to where I you can see how many times you call them. Till I've called them like 12, 15 times, so <laughs> I'm blowing their phones up. <laughs> um, but no, usually I don't leave voicemails until um, if they were like call me back at this time and then they don't pick up, then I'll leave them a voicemail. But typically, I'm just calling the leads till they pick up. What's interesting is that hearing you say that. Like, if I someone called me, like I mean, we all get call i mean i'm someone on some medicare list they think i'm 72 or 64 and a half and they want it's time for enrollment grady and i'm like how do you know my name and think that i'm 64 but you think about the way that we approach leads and the way we approach servicing clients and just this driven i'm going to resolve it no questions asked i'm going to get a hold of betty whether it's right now or I'm driving to Washington <laughs> and knock, knock, knock. You see that? You know that number? Yeah, that's me. I'm Bree. <laughs> nice to meet you. We need to get this. I got your packet here. Look, is that the kitchen table? Right. I, and, but I think about that because I think about how many calls I get throughout the day that are just garbage. And, and half of them are, are bots. Some of them are people that don't know what they're saying. And some of them are just people that have no sales acumen. And I think to myself, like a lot of them I don't answer. But like if some number called me as many times as we call people i would answer every time <laughs> and i think about like the way we approach business is just so much more driven and more i'm gonna get the job done than other ways like like the rest of the world and it's just i i mean maybe i'm just on a i'm not on the lists i should go opt into some i should not opt into some <laughs> stuff but if you think about that and i just love hearing you say it, you're like she requested coverage she went through 15 questions online saying she wanted someone to contact them she's either at work or she's at church or she's at a doctor's appointment i'm gonna get a hold of betty and we're gonna get this figured out and we're gonna find out if she's got something or if we can put something in place and i just loved i love hearing that because for all of you that are out there, you spent the money. The client requested it. Do your job. Like, that's it. Just do your job. Call them and resolve the lead. They want the coverage. Until they tell you that they don't want the coverage or they fill out an app, call them. And guess what? The two things are going to happen. They either will eventually answer and buy or they eventually answer and tell you not to call them anymore. So I love it. Okay, any other setup tips or is it just kind of, you know, don't overcomplicate it, Grady. It's exactly. not that deep. Yeah, just plug in your leads and start calling them. It's as simple as that. I love it. Okay, so now here's here's the fun stuff. I want to hear what you say. So um, just I want to, you know, so you, Betty answers and how, how does Bree go from lead to Betty to getting an app submitted? What are the words you say for those that are out there going, I want to protect 40 families like Bree does. I don't know what to say. I'm nervous. Here, here's where you take, here's where you pause and you get a pen and paper. All right, so ring, ring, ring. You want me to, you want to role play with me? I mean, is that what you're asking? <laughs> you, you, or if you feel more comfortable, like, because I sometimes, I don't want to screw you up if you feel yeah. more comfortable just kind of going through it. So we have our script on the Limitless Bootcamp of our phone script, super simple. It's like any other script out there. You're calling, verifying their date of birth address, um, asking if they filled it out for just themselves or if they have a spouse as well. With one call closes, you're wanting to close them that minute you have them on the phone. So there's no callbacks or anything like that. It's like you picked up the phone, you've got about five, 10 minutes for me to run over this information with you. So um, you'll ask them, you know, you at home, do you have a pen and paper? All right, can you grab it? Have them write down your license so information. You're excited. You, I, I love everything you're saying. I want you to like, from the very, like, how do you handle it? Like, I mean, is it, hey, is this Betty? Like that point. Yeah. Even just even more detailed, at least on the beginning. Cause then when we get to the, you know, once you've got, cause that's always the part people struggle at. Like, I don't know how to get this person to trust me in 13 seconds. Yeah. And you've clearly got it figured out. So whether it's yeah. the confidence, your tonality or the words you're saying that that's more, I want that real quick and then go into the rest of it. Yeah. So you're calling, I mean, you're verifying their information. So they're like, Oh, you have my date of birth. You have my address. So, you know, this is, um, Bree calling from the benefit center here in Washington. We received your request that you filled out looking for information on the life insurance programs. I have your date of birth as this and your address is this. Is that correct? Yes. So hey, that's the first question you asked. Yes. 
Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes. So there's no pausing, guys. There's no thoughts. She, no. There's no no think about it. There's no who is this. It's I have your birthday. Yeah. And I'll do the birthday first, and then I'll move to address. That way I have two things that they filled out. And sometimes it's a pre-populated address. They're like, that's not correct. Awesome. You're still located out in Washington? Perfect. Okay. And then keep moving forward. That's not an objection, them saying that's not their address. Just a typo. So um, then from there, after I ver- verify those things, two things. I'm just asking, you know, did you fill this out for just yourself or did you have a spouse in mind also? So that way, you know, if you're sitting one or two people. And then after that, I'm just like, okay, just simple process takes five, 10 minutes for me to run over this information with you. Are you home right now? Yes. Okay. Can you grab a pen and paper? That's it. That's it. Okay. So grab a pen and paper. I want you to write some stuff down. Are you, what, what are you going to have them keep going? Um, so I'm going to have you write down my name. So give them your name, your license number. That's very important because any objection you get later on, you can revert back to, I gave you my license number. I can walk you through how to look me up on the department of insurance website. So very important to give your name and license number then. And then after that, I just go straight into my presentation. Okay. So give us, let's hear that. All right. So um, my name's Abri again, so I'm a broker for Family First Life. So what that means is I work with over 30 different ANA plus rated insurance companies. That just allows me to do all the shopping around for you. Now, I'm not the sales agent. I'm on the medical side of things. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions regarding your health. That way I have a good idea of which company is going to offer you the best rate. And then from there, all we do is submit an application to see if we could get you approved for the coverage. However, there's no payments or decisions made today, Okay. So that way I'm already getting rid of the objection that they can shop around because I can do that for them. And then a lot of the time people don't want to deal with it because they think they have to make a payment today and that's not the case either. And then I let them know I'm not the sales agent, I'm the field underwriter, so there goes all the sales pressure. I'm not the sales agent, I'm the, on the medical side of things. Yeah. That's good. That's real good. That was worth That was worth showing up today, right there. Um, okay, so okay. So then you keep going. What, what are the next things, questions, get this? Yeah, from there I'm going through the financial inventory sheet, just asking every single question that's on there. Um, a few other ones I like to add is just like, you know, when you filled this out, were you looking mainly to cover your funeral and final arrangements, leave money behind? That way you know what you're kind of looking at quote-wise. Um, and then from there, just go to America, quote your options, and start an application. You don't get, I mean, that process is pretty simple, especially rolling into, do you show them their options? You know, looking at these, which one do you think you want to try to qualify for? Um, but doing things virtual, you do deal with a few more objections than obviously going at home because sure. you're talking to these people over the phone. Um, so you're going to deal with some trust issues there. But it's important to kind of keep conversation with them that entire time that you know, you're asking those questions on the financial inventory sheet, but once you get into an application, um, keeping, you know, a conversation going instead of just being silent the entire time, you know, these people are humans, you know, you can have a conversation about, you know, where are you from? How many kids? How many, they love to talk about their grandkids or kids, you know, have small conversations with them, um, you know, still keeping it on insurance, you know, that's what we're here to do today, but you know, you can be personable. Um, and then social's usually not a huge issue. People love to give their social out. It's banking that they have a problem with. So um, one thing that I found that has worked really well for me is instead of saying, once you get to that point on the application where you're asking for their payment information, instead of just saying, hey, Grady, what's your account and routing number? Because yeah. that might come off a little bit weird over the phone. I'm saying, hey, Grady, who do you bank with? Uh, Chase. Okay, did you open that account up in Arizona? I did. Okay, so now I'm Googling Arizona Chase routing number. That way you already have that. Okay, so it looks like we do partner with Chase. So I have the routing number pulled up here. Do you have something to verify this with? So Grady's going to get his checkbook because I just asked if he had some, you know what I mean? So that just already kind of flows the process of, okay, let me go, you know, see if I have something with my routing number. And then, you know, a lot of the time, sometimes it's as simple as, oh, you need my account number too? Yep, buddy. You know what I mean? So, and sometimes you're going to deal with a little bit more pushback there, but then you can just revert back to, you know, I gave you my license. You can look that up. But that process, I just feel like that word track of, you know, pulling up their routing number instead of being like, hey, what's your routing and account? Mm-hmm. It's another set of numbers. It's because it, when they, they're used to in other ex- common similar situations, and you've got to go and register with your electric or power company. Okay, what's your routing number? What's your account number? And when you go... We partner with Chase. I have the routing number. Can you verify this? Is 0211002 or whatever? I mean, I think it's something like that. Um, and they go, yeah, that's what we have. Okay, what's the account number too? Like you've saved them a step, which also builds so much more trust. No, like, which is, I mean, guys, this is sales. This is also trying to help clients feel comfortable and confident that we're doing the right thing by them, which we 100% are. And, but to use tactful processes like that. Did you come up with that? Yeah, I did. 
<laughs> Le- go breathe. <laughs> that's God. This, this is number two point. Why you showed up today? Because that's legit. Never heard that before, and I've been doing this for a while. Um, but that's such a smart way to do it because now they only need to give you. They're verifying the account, which now feels complete trust that they have. You have the right information because that's a big yeah. thing too. I don't want to give myself something to someone who doesn't have the right information. Right? Yeah. You have the right information. Trust even higher level of trust. Uh, what's the account number two? We need to fill that into the application. Yeah. And then if you get any pushback on that, it's just like, hey, if your neighborhood kid was to come mow you a lawn, you write them a check, your account routing number's on the bottom. That's public information. Nobody can do anything with that. Yeah. So That's good. Okay. And so um, social's easy to get. You ever, I mean, how do you ask for it? Um, do you social? have your social memorized? Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. You know, if you give it with any objection, that's how they look into your medical prescription history. So see if you're healthy enough to qualify for the coverage. No nurse comes out to draw blood or urine. They're able to pull everything through your social. Okay. They're like, wow, that's cool. I'm like, yeah. Okay. And then how do you, um, how do you end it? How do you close it? So they, okay, perfect. We hit submit. Yeah. So if they're approved, I like to tell my clients they're approved. That way I don't have to do any callbacks or anything like that. So if they were approved for the coverage, I'll say, so um, Americo came back and you were approved for the coverage. So congratulations, Grady. That's huge. I'm going to have you write a few things down. So on that piece of paper, I'm having them write down um, the company name, the draft date, the coverage, all of that information. And then I just let them know Americo is going to be mailing everything out to you within seven to 14 business days. Once you get it, review it, give me a call if you have any questions and keep it in a safe place. Fantastic. Now, do you do anything post after that? You send them an email, a letter, a thank you card? call you don't need, they're it's they're good. good to go they need anything i'll have you know them call me hey i received it in the mail i have a question about this perfect but let them know i'm your agent moving forward i'm going to be the one delivering that check to your family so at any point this becomes you know a financial burden we need to change anything upgrade your coverage give me a call i'm going to be the agent here to help you do so legit okay let's do a couple objections i need to think about it this sounds great brie um i i really think this looks good um but i need to think about it Absolutely. And so does the insurance company. So that's why we just submit an application because Grady, if you can't get approved, then there's nothing to think about. So once we submit an application, the insurance company will actually mail you everything out for you guys to review and look over. And at that point, we can make any changes that we need to. Okay. Um, I don't know if I can afford it. Okay. So it looks like you wanted to do the 20,000, but let's maybe look at the bronze program, Grady. Get your foot in the door with something smaller. And then if your finances change, we can always look at something different. Okay. And that's, that's huge. I feel like I downclose a lot of clients because they're like, I want the gold. And you know their monthly income, and you're like, no, and maybe I recommend the silver program. You know what I mean? And that's the biggest thing. If, if people aren't wanting to move forward, it's usually to do with the price. So, you know, it's like, hey, let's, you know, let's start off small. And they're like, okay, yeah, you're right. Because you want to make sure, you know, this isn't going to take food off the table, but you're going to be able to pay this every single month because it's not going to do any good if you pay in it to it for two months and then cancel. Okay. I need to talk to my son. Absolutely. And what do you need to talk to your son about? just to see if this is a good program. Absolutely. Um, we can do one of two things. So we can either call your son right now or if he's not available, let's just see if you can qualify first. And then if you can qualify, then you can have that conversation with your son about what you want to do. Okay. I think I have coverage with my bank. Is this, is this, this seems more expensive. Yeah. So banks actually only offer accidental coverage. So Grady, that's not going to do you any good. You want something that's going to pay out no matter how, when, or where you pass away. So let's see if we can get you qualified for something permanent. Drop a bunch of B's in the comments below to show Brie some love because she just crushed that. <laughs> this is, um, Brie, you're doing tremendous. I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's clear you're a master of your craft, disciplined, and where others have given up because that's what happens in life. There's a group of people that will start and there's a, group of, there's a much smaller group that will finish. And you're at, a, you're at a point where you're continuing to ascend and you're still continuing to crush it. Any final advice on selling for new agents that are out there right now wanting to go? She's so calm. She's chill as a as a penguin or a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's just so chill. Penguins are chill. Uh, she's just so chill. How how do what is some advice you have just for people that are like I'm scared, I'm nervous, I don't know what to do that has helped push you through? I mean, I was too. I've been there. Um, but treat your first if you're brand new, treat your first ninety days like a boot camp. That's like my best advice is to go all in. Buy the leads, dial them. You're gonna fail. You're gonna learn. Record yourself pre- presenting. You know, listen back on it. Um, the best thing about doing things virtual too, we have our Zoom open all the time. So it's like when we have new agents on, when they're running presentations, if they're not unmuted, I'm literally blowing up their phone, unmute, so I can listen to you. Share your screen that way that you can help them along the way. Um, but just be a student of the game. You know, there's so much training out there with FFL. 
all across the board that anything that you need help on, there's a video out there of someone helping you um, get through that. So just kind of go all in, honestly. That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Thank you very much.